What's going on everybody? Lil Chris here and in today's video I bring you my next match from the Texas BCA State Event 10 Ball Tournament. Because if you can recall from my last video I showed you where I was battling for the hot seat only to fall short after fighting my way back to get to Hill Hill only for my opponent to break and run the last rack. So with that loss I was now guaranteed third place. So in this match up here I'm going to try to see if I can fight my way back into the final. My opponent in this match here has a 670 Fargo rate against my 622. So now I get to go to four while my opponent goes to five. So let's see how I can do. So here's the first rack, and my opponent and I actually lagged to determine who was going to break first, whereas in on my last match, all we did was a coin flip. And my opponent won the lag, so they'll be breaking first. We see the cue ball getting kicked all over the place. It looks like the seven ball fell in the upper right corner pocket. And the two ball fell into the right middle pocket. And my opponent has a shot at the one for the upper left. Three ball sitting there in the middle of the table. You just saw my opponent gesture to try to maybe get position for the three to go into the bottom left. Or now it looks like he's going to try to come off the side rail and run into the four ball to maybe play the three in the left middle. And he does run into the four ball, but he hits it on the wrong side. Now he's hooked behind the five. We're probably going to see a jump shot here. Okay, that makes me believe he thinks he's going to run into the six ball, which will hold position for the four if he makes this jump. Oh, nicely done there. Cue ball does run into the six. And now I get to come to the table. I do have a shot at the three for either of the bottom corner pockets. But on this particular shot here, I did try to back cut this into the lower right corner pocket. And I think I had some, I think this is bottom right spin as I tried to draw the cue ball in between the six and the nine. And then the right spin to pull it back so I can have position on the four to go into the upper right corner pocket. And you can see I overcut the three, pretty much got the position that I was looking for, just kind of overran it just a little bit because I would have to back cut the four ball. But not off to a great start here. My opponent has a free shot at the three. We draw him back for position on the four. There it looks like the four will go into the upper right corner pocket and probably just draw back a little bit to play the five in the same pocket. Okay, here he's got a bit of an angle, so I'm not sure if he's just going to gently roll the five in or push the cue ball over to the side rail and try to come back to where the cue ball is at right now for the six. Okay, he does go to the side rail, returns the cue ball back to where it was. And then here, I'm not sure if the high inside three railer is the best shot here. You might try to zigzag this position here with bottom right spin. And that is what he tried. He just looks like he might have uh, either overcut it or undercut it. I couldn't tell which rail he hit on that one. But now I'm back at the table. This is a bit of a thin cut shot. Um, and since the match has just started, I'd only warmed up about 30 minutes prior to the match because this is the second day of the tournament after I had lost my uh, last match. That was the end of the day. And so this is the early morning of the next day here. So I wasn't feeling quite as aggressive um, as I was in my last match. So I attempt to play a safety here. And I actually wanted to see if I can get the six ball to bank behind the nine ball and then try to hide the cue ball behind the ten. You can see I hit it too soft. The six doesn't even get behind the nine ball, nor does the cue ball end up behind the 10 either. So now I think my opponent plays a safety here and just tries to keep the cue ball behind the nine. 
but he ends up hitting his just a little too hard, and I now have a free shot at the six for the upper left corner. So pretty much here, I tried to just stun the cue ball over to the right side rail, so that way I can play the eight ball into the same corner pocket. Pretty much like this and then when I play the eight I put a little bit of top left spin on the cue ball just so I can get a little bit closer to the nine ball in order to play it into the bottom left and then here I actually wanted to draw back slightly I like I would like the cue ball to be right where it's at in order to shoot the ten as you can see I ended up playing a stop shot instead because I just didn't draw it back enough so this is a bit of a cut angle here for me to get the first point. But unfortunately, I don't cut it enough and I end up just giving that rack to my opponent. So the score is now zero to one. So here we are with rack two after I completely dogged that 10 ball in rack one, but I am at least up to break because this is an alternating break formatted tournament. Let's see how I do with my break. Okay, got a pretty good square hit on the rack. Looks like I didn't have enough top spin on the cue ball like I normally would try to do to get the cue ball to hold near the middle of the table. I ended up breaking dry, but it does at least look like my opponent doesn't have a shot at the one ball. The six ball does block it. So I'd be curious if he decides to try to jump over the six like he did in the previous rack on a particular shot or just kick to the side rail. And so what my opponent actually does is what's called a push or a rollout. And what that is is after the break, the current player, which could include myself because if I would have made a ball, I could do this. Anytime after the break, if the current player does not like their current shot, they can elect to do a push, push the cue ball wherever they would like, and the next incoming player can either shoot it where it lays or give it back to the previous player. I took this shot because I tried to cut the one ball into the side pocket and have the cue ball come to the short rail and get position on the two. But because of how fast this table is, I end up hitting it too hard. You can see I have no position on the two ball and I'm hooked behind the four. So I do have to try to kick at this two ball. So I do try a one rail kick shot, and I actually think I was trying to make the two ball off of the 10. So I kick to the short rail here, come back and hit the two ball. The two ball does hit the, the 10 ball, but you see there, I just didn't hit it hard enough. And not only did I not hit it hard enough, I didn't contact a rail afterwards, so that is a foul, and my opponent has ball in hand. So you can see here what my opponent is doing is both an offensive and a defensive shot at the same time, because watch this shot. He calls the 10 ball into the upper right corner pocket, but all that pointing around that you saw him do with his cue, watch the two ball. See, he makes the 10 ball, so he wins the rack, but look at what happens if he missed. I'm actually hooked to get to the two ball behind the six, which is a really, really smart play. Now, because of how fast that rack was, we're just gonna go ahead and fast forward to his next break. And here we are with rack three. And the score is currently zero to two in my opponent's favor. So there it looks like he broke and made the seven ball go into the side pocket. Two balls in a bit of a trouble. And it does look like he can hit the one ball. I just don't know how much of it he can hit with the three ball being in the way. So 
So he just plays a safety. I think he wanted to hide the cue ball behind the eight and the two, but this still works out because the six ball blocks the one. And on this shot here, I elect to do a two rail kick. You can see me putting my hand over there by the upper left corner pocket because that's where I expect to kick the one ball. I'm going to go to the side rail and then the short rail and come behind the one. This is with a bit of, I think this is top right spin. You can see the one ball is heading down there and luckily almost caroms off of the nine ball, though I was intending for it to go straight there. The nine ball just would have been a helper. So now my opponent does have a free shot at the one ball, but he needs to try to do something with the two. So you can see that he's using right spin on the cue ball. So when it comes off the short rail, it tries to come over and break apart the two. But not as much of a breakout as he would have liked. So you can best well think that a safety is coming up here by just clipping the two into the five so the two stays behind the eight and the cue ball comes to the other side like this. Now, what's actually about to happen here is Pretty funny because both of us were actually laughing because we knew exactly what was going on here. I do try to do a one rail kick shot, uh, pretty much a half the distance. So you can see me kick over here at diamond two on the short rail to try to get a good hit on the uh, the two ball. But I hit the rail too soon and ran into the eight. So there's my first foul. So with ball in hand, watch what my opponent decides to do. He's on the two ball, but he intentionally hits the three and ties it up next to the two. So he's on one foul. But immediately, both of us are smiling and laughing at each other because I knew exactly what he was doing. And I'm over here thinking, I can't remember what professional match this was. But it was basically where someone tried to purposely three foul them by trading fouls. And the, um, the person ended up trying to jump the cue ball into the clutter and make a legal hit. That's what I thought we were going to end up doing. I'll have to provide a link uh, to that video because I know it exists on YouTube, but my opponent wasn't uh, aware that there was a window for me to actually see the two ball clearly like this and actually get a good hit. So the three foul is off the table here. So here it looks like he might be just trying to play the simple tap safety and just leave the two ball on the rail. Oh, never mind. Looks like he might change his mind. So here it looks like he's just going to clip the two ball, checking to see to make sure that he's not going to scratch. You can see he's got left spin on his cue ball, so he's going to try to hide me behind the three ball. And I mean, how do you hit it? Like, that was perfect. So here, shooting left-handed, I try to do a one rail kick shot, but I don't want to separate that two from the five, really. I want to make a legal hit, and I want something to be able to hit a rail, but you can see I don't make a legal hit. I end up clipping the three ball. So normally you would think in situations like that, you would hit the ball hard and just try to spread stuff open after you make a legal hit. I don't think that's a good idea. That's why I hit it as soft as I did. I just didn't kick far enough over. Had I'd hit the two ball, the two ball would have hit the five, the five would have hit the rail, and then therefore the clutter would stay, and we would end up just trading safeties back and forth until hopefully someone makes a mistake. But in my case, I make the mistake first. So my opponent takes his ball in hand, easily makes the two ball, it's got good position on the three, most likely comes two rails around here for position on the four. And then let's see, what does he do from here? Because I'm not sure how he can get behind the eight ball in order to shoot the five in the side from here. Oh, he just stuns it over. He's got to get perfectly straight in, which he does. Because if he had any kind of a cut angle on that, the cue ball would just scratch into the side pocket. So you have to be very, very precise with a shot like that. If anything here, he, since he does have a slight cut angle. I bet he just comes off the point just like that. Very well done. This rack does not look good for me here. Just a simple stop shot on the six ball to have position for the eight. Pretty much like that. A little bit of an angle here so we can just stun the cue ball closer to the middle of the table for position on the nine. And 
then what do you do here? Do you go to the sh side rail and then come to basically where he's shooting at on the uh, right side rail? Pretty much like that. And then there you go. With that ball in hand foul that I gave him on the three, my opponent's off to a quick lead, zero to three. Now in rack four, I'm back up to break again, and I gotta try to put something together. And that looks like another dry break for me. So my opponent can see the one ball. Don't think he would want to attempt to cut the one ball into the upper left corner pocket being bridged over the three and the eight. And that little gesture right there makes me think he's going to bank the one ball over to the right side of the table and then just try to play a safety by hiding the cue ball behind the five. Pretty much like that. What a shot. And the one ball is also hidden behind the two. So this is a similar shot like before that I had with the one ball. I look to play a two rail kick shot in order to hit it. And I want to be able to catch it on the left side of the two as you see where I lay my cue down. So I try to do the midpoint parallel shift two rail kick system uh, just to give me like a ballpark idea of where I need to hit on the short rail first. Uh, in order to try to make the kick and you see me call the right middle pocket because I'm thinking if I catch the one ball correctly on the left side there then hopefully the one ball will just carry them off of the nine and head towards the right side pocket just in case if I happen to make it that way I can still continue to shoot so since I am kicking towards the left I do have top left spin on here You see, I barely missed it. End up giving ball in hand to my opponent. So I think right here, my opponent was looking at trying to see how the two ball can pass by the three ball. Like, is there enough room? Because I think there was only like probably like half of a pocket um, past the three ball in order to get into the uh, corner pocket there. Because he plays the one ball here into the right middle and gets position for the two in the uh, upper right. I'm actually surprised he just didn't try to play the two ball in the uh, same pocket as the uh, one ball. You can see he hits the two ball or pockets it on the very left side of the uh, upper right corner pocket. And with this shot here, I actually like this um, about my opponent here. He's concerned on whether or not if he's going to hit the eight ball first or hit the three ball first. So he actually calls a referee on himself rather than me calling the referee. So it does take us a good minute uh, for the referee to get over to us. So I'm just going to fast forward until the referee gets here. About right there. So we call the ref just to make sure he doesn't hit the eight ball first, because then that would be a foul and I would have ball in hand. Okay, good shot. Cue ball just rolls forward to get position for the four. And I actually thought he was going to play the four into the left middle but he does another creative shot just like how when he played the 210 combination he calls the bank on the four and look him put bottom spin on the cue ball and why would you wonder so that way when he draws back and it's hidden behind the eight just in case he misses the four ball if he makes it he has position on the five so it's actually a really good smart decision now this kick shot's a little bit easier than the two rail kick shot that i had on the uh, one ball I do go to the left side rail with a bit of left spin on the cue ball, so that way I can hit the four ball. On this shot here, I don't call a pocket. I pretty much know that I'm trying to kick the four ball over to the right side rail and have it come down towards the bottom rail. And then hopefully the cue ball just kind of stays somewhere towards the middle. And I'm actually fortunate that I didn't scratch. So my opponent can see the four. It goes right in between the window between the uh, six and the ten. And you can see right there where he's pointing his cue, that's where he wanted the four ball to end up. But I guess catching the point of the side pocket messed that up. And now I have a free shot at the four ball here. 
And with this shot, I do try a lot of bottom spin so that way I can try to pull the cue ball over to the side rail just above the eight ball to try to get position for the eight. You can see right there, the bottom spin doesn't take effect. Judging by how the cue ball uh, comes off of the four ball, you can see right there where I'm pointing on the side rail where I wanted the cue ball to be, it looks like the backspin must have died out by the time it got there and it almost turned into pretty much a stun shot and just went straight into the corner. So let's see here. Here's another interesting decision which makes sense. When you have ball in hand, you would normally not think to play a combination. I mean, clearly he could have played the five ball to go into the upper left corner pocket, try to get position on the six, and then come back down for the seven. But with that ten ball being there, that kind of makes the movement of the cue ball a little tricky. So at least here, when he played the five-seven combination, knowing that the five ball really isn't going to go anywhere, transitioning from the five to the six here is easy, but then going from the six to the eight is easier than going from the six to the seven. So taking the combination with ball in hand here was actually another good decision by my opponent because now he can play the six ball into the lower right corner pocket and with right spin on the cue ball, bring the cue ball two rails, short rail and then long rail to get position on the eight. And then with right spin again, after he plays the eight into the upper right corner pocket, he wants to bring the cue ball past the side pocket so he can play the nine ball into the right middle. Almost didn't put enough right spin on it. But here he can just roll the ball in, get position on the 10 to go into the bottom left corner pocket. And this is really not looking good for me. Because now with that 10 ball, my opponent is on the hill. So here in rack five with my opponent breaking on the hill, I couldn't help but think, deja vu. This is pretty much what happened to me on my last match when I was down zero to three and my opponent was on the hill and all I wanted to do was win one rack. So can I do it? And it looks like my opponent makes the three ball into the bottom left corner pocket. And I think he has a shot at the one ball. Two ball is sitting right in the middle of the top rail here. So if he can't see the one ball, he's just going to roll this in. Nicely done there. Two ball can go into the upper right corner pocket, and I think the cue ball just comes right down the middle of the table towards the nine to get position on the four to go into the bottom right. Pretty much like that. And this shot here looks like you play two rails. You come to the short rail and then the side rail to get position on the five to go into the right middle. So he's got a bit of right spin on the cue ball. Nicely done there. You don't want to get too straight, though, because you want it to be at least a little bit underneath the five ball, so that way you can push the cue ball forward to get behind the six to possibly play it into the bottom right corner pocket. And I, I think my opponent might be a little too straight. You can see he's taking his time there. A little bit of hesitation. And, yeah, he must be a little too straight, so I think he's going to try to cheat the pocket and try to power draw the cue ball back to the left side rail with enough power to get back over to the right to get still get position on the six pretty much like that with the cue ball but he rattles the five so i've got bit of a back cut angle here on the five ball to go into the bottom right and with where the seven ball is at i figured if i can get the cue ball uh, to where I can see the six for the upper right corner pocket, I can just roll the six in to get position on the seven. So I play the five ball, or I try to play the five ball into the bottom right corner pocket with a bit of low right spin, so that way it comes over to the side rail and then kind of dies off the side rail and head back towards the other side of the table to get position on the six. You can see there, I didn't cut it enough. I'm getting the position that I want to where I can just roll the six ball in and then I would get position on the seven. 
So now with this shot here, it does look like my opponent can squeeze the five ball behind the six and even play a safety if he wants, but I do believe the five ball goes into the upper right corner pocket. You can see he's automatically got top spin on the cue ball, so hopefully the cue ball will roll past the six ball to give him position. Little friendly bump on the six gives him position for the six in the left middle. And if he makes this shot, he looks like he might be out. A little bit of a cut angle there. You can see how he's prepping to see what his shot will look like on the seven if he does try to draw off the six. Wants to draw it hard enough to be able to avoid the scratch in the uh, right side pocket. Or is he coming all the way down table and back up? So he tries that shot instead. That's a much safer shot. Because you saw him point on the right side rail just above the side pocket if he were to try to draw. But this was a better decision. Here I think you can use a little uh, low right spin. Have the cue ball go two rails. Pretty much like this. You can almost get position for the bottom corner pocket or even the uh, side pocket, but you can see him put his cue on the table. He wanted to get position for the eight ball to go into the right side pocket. But I think here he will try to play this in the lower right, or is he going to try to cut it into the side? Oh, what a shot. Nice shot. And this looks like it brings my tournament end to a close. Nothing fancy he has to do here with the nine ball. He just has to make it. Cue ball really shouldn't be moving anywhere. Probably just stuns a little bit closer to the side rail like that. Ten ball in the upper left corner pocket. Well, as much as I wanted to win one rack... I end up getting a shutout. My opponent goes on to the finals. And that's going to do it for today's video. Not quite the exciting conclusion that I had in mind, because what could go wrong did go wrong. But an overall satisfying performance. You know, since the last big tournament that I played in was the Texas State Open, and I had shared my two matches where I basically went two and out. So to finish third place in an event like this, couldn't be happier, especially since my opponent that knocked me out, I actually put him in the loser's bracket by beating him 4-3 to three on the winner's side. So he really got his redemption against me, beating me 0-5 to five to go into the finals. And he also complimented me on how much better I've gotten because we've matched up in previous events, and he would practically dominate me. So to receive a compliment like that really made my day. And he actually went on to win the entire 10 ball event by double dipping his opponent in the final. So congratulations to him. Now, my biggest takeaways that I have from this 10 ball tournament is breaking a 10 ball rack without a template rack. Um, you saw in this matchup here where I clearly struggled because I broke dry every time. But at least on my previous match, I was able to make a ball on the break here and there and even some of the matchups through the entire tournament. Sometimes I would make a ball and sometimes I would break dry. So it just wasn't really consistent. And you also saw, at least in this match here, where I still need to work on my kicks. Uh, some of my two rail kicks were pretty good, but uh, my one rail kicks just weren't kicking far enough because I would run into an opposing ball and give my opponent ball at hand. So that's one of the big reasons why I always like to see videos of myself to see where my mistakes are, especially if my match is a loss, because I really try to get the study on what do I need to fix so that way I can at least win a game or two or let alone come off with the victory? So this is pretty much going to be the last video that I have of this event. Y'all did hear me say how I participated in the eight ball singles event. Just never made it to the stream table. I think I finished 13th through 16th place, which wasn't enough to even cash. Oh, which I did forget. I did win $760 for getting third place in the 10 ball event. And as far as the 8-ball teams event, my team was able to finish, I think it was 5th through 8th, and that was enough uh, to place in the money. We just never ended up on the stream table. And I think between the six of us that were on the team, we were able to split, I think it was $85. So I pretty much came out with a payout of, I think it's $845, which is actually really good because I can't remember the last time I had a payout like that from a tournament. So... 
at the very least, I hope everybody was able to enjoy watching this match of me getting my butt kicked and still be able to learn something. So if you like what you saw, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to click the bell notification icon to be notified whenever I go live or publish a new video. Take care, everybody.